Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look at the game Neumann against Karl Schlechter 1904 Vienna. I wanted to show you some games of Karl Schlechter because uh, I have the bad feeling that I've been uh, using wins against him to illustrate how uh, uh, wonderful other players are. And he was a fantastic player in his own right. Uh, he died tragically young in, uh, in 1918, but um, yeah, scored many tournament victories and of course drew a match with the great Emmanuel Lasker, uh, a 10 game match after having led it and then lost the last game, absolutely thrilling. You know, really was a, an exceptional player. Um, and as a sort of a double bonus, I get to show you one of my favourite lines of the uh, King's Gambit. I mean, there are lots of different uh, tweaks of this move order. It can happen in all sorts of uh, different uh, ways. But the basic idea is that a knight d4 comes in, uh, white just ignores it, and you get knight takes c2, knight takes a1, and then white starts attacking. Always loved that uh, from when I was a kid. Must have seen it in some, uh, some book somewhere, and uh, well... Nice to see how this one goes. Let's have a look how we get to it. So e4, e5, f4, bishop c5, knight f3, d6. The king's gambit declined. Um, not played very much nowadays. Um, yeah, black players tend to grab that pawn on f4. But, um, well, king's gambit expert um, uh, Rudolf Spielmann, in his uh, lovely article uh, from the deathbed of the king's, in, of the king's gambit, uh, sorry, um, uh, yeah, thought that this was um, a pretty decent way for black to play. Um, by the way, um, um, I read this article in a biography that recently came out of Rudolf Spielmann by Elkin Ruby, and uh, um, really very, very interesting. Uh, Spielmann's annotations are, are gorgeous, and um, uh, his games are fantastic as well. So uh, definitely worth getting if you're uh, if you're interested in this stuff. But uh, bishop c4, knight c6, knight c3, and now bishop g4. And uh, well, I've commented on it a few times that uh, you know black players of that era in king's pawn openings, they tended to play bishop g4 as soon as they possibly could. Um, I think modern players are a little bit uh, a little bit more cautious with that. Um, but anyway, it leads to a thrilling game. After h3, bishop takes f3, queen f3, and knight d4. Not the engine's choice, uh, by the way. Uh, the engines either want to play um, knight f6 or knight g7 and uh, get developed first. Just, uh, yeah, you know, be able to deal with any threats against g7 just by castling. And uh, consider that the, the position is, um, is pretty decent. But, I mean, who could resist playing the move knight d4? Uh, the key point, of course, is that you can't protect the pawn on c2 because queen h4 check is coming. So, yeah, a sacrifice is necessary. Um, now, quite interesting, um, uh, here um, Neumann played uh, queen g3, which is, um, uh, yeah, basically what, uh, what uh, I think any human player would play. But um, the, um, uh, the engines actu actually want to play the move uh, queen g4, and uh, the reason for it is quite subtle. The point is after um, queen g3, the engines want to play e takes f4. Um, meeting queen g7 with queen f6 which is fair enough consider that the position uh, is uh, slightly better for black if uh, if white just uh, exchanges off queens like that well you can imagine now i'm attacking c2 and i'm also going to have stuff like rook g8 and um, that's much more all this activity is much more important than uh, yeah you know a potentially weak although even that pawn looks quite dangerous to be honest pawn on f4 so um, after e takes f4, you have to play queen f4, and then on we go, knight f6. And uh, the engines consider this pretty good. What they want is that um, after queen g4, if you go e takes f4, then um, white can play the, uh, the move king d1. Obviously, you're not attacked, you're not forced to take on f4. And, uh, well, then you've still got this problem with g7, of course, queen f6, knight d5. Um, so, um, so you have to go uh, something like knight f6, and then I go queen g7, and this is just, uh, yeah, obviously a, a much better version, threatening queen h8 and queen f7 checkmate. And, uh, well, black has to decide how to deal with that threat. So that is the reason you want to play queen g4, which is quite, uh, quite interesting. So the best move for, uh, for black is takes, and then takes, takes, and king d1. Um, I mean, it's weird putting the queen on g4 because you, you, you will lose a tempo with knight f6, but somehow it uh, just enables white to, uh, to keep control better here. Um, this was a game, um, uh, Stockfish against Dragon, that I ran. Knight a4, b5, takes bc, b4. Total mess, of course, as always with the engines and the king's gambit. But, uh, but yeah, very, very interesting idea, queen g4. Would not have occurred to me at all. So queen g3... 
But uh, Schlechter took on c2, and who can blame him? King d1, knight takes a1, and then, um, yeah, rather than taking on uh, g7, when queen f6 would be a good uh, reply, Neumann just played f takes c5 and said, OK, <laughs> OK, black, deal with it. Um, so there are, you know, just threats in the offing, obviously queen g7, uh, f takes c5 also uh, gives white the idea of rook f1, and then black's just got to deal with it. So there's a couple of lines that um, that the engines tried. I mean, um, uh, D takes C5 was uh, was Stockfish's uh, main line, and uh, um, yeah, I mean it's pretty hairy, I can tell you, but uh, it's, it all seems to, to hang together somehow. So Rook F1, attacking the pawn on uh, on F7, and now this move Queen D4, Bishop F7, King D7. So uh, sort of uh, escaping there. Now we've got a, a few different ideas, but Queen check, King C6, and now B4 was uh um this was uh dragon's uh line i think and uh, the idea is uh simply to uh to play bishop b2 quickly and well you know we've got threats of attacking the queen we've also can regain some material so bishop b4 bishop b2 and uh, here actually in the game stockfish against dragon um i think i'm running dragon uh um um mcts so um this sort of um uh yeah slightly different uh, evaluation analysis mode that um uh, that uh, uh komodo has got uh, they they said modeled uh, on alpha zero uh, maybe not that but uh, but uh, similar similar thing anyway and uh, it does miss tactics uh, from time to time that uh, that, uh, that the normal dragon doesn't miss and um it went for queen d3 rook f3 queen c2 king e2 um obviously yeah storm clouds are gathering um so a6 played by black um and then there, there were some lovely variations i'll just uh, show them to you quickly bishop b6 and then this move bishop a3 which is um, um actually a little bit of a killer um in the game uh, dragon played here and takes takes and queen b4 uh, king c7 rook f7 Rook e8, knight d5 check was curtains. You know, king d8, we go queen d6 check. And um, the gorgeous idea is that uh, after bishop, this move, bishop a3, if you take on a3, I go check, bishop d6. Then I give a check. You've got to go back. And then queen b7, and I'm threatening both queen a8. Oops, and queen c6 uh, check with mate. And somehow the, uh, the white king is completely safe there. So, yeah, that was quite uh, exciting, uh, but um, uh, the main line was to take, take queen c5, queen g7, knight e7, bishop a1, rook d8, queen takes c5, takes, takes. And this is quite typical. Actually, we got something a, a little bit similar to that uh, in the game, although a much worse version for white. But uh, this is very much what is happening a lot in these um, uh uh, in these positions the black king's getting chased over to the queen side whites grabbing pawns and getting some part of the material back and then we've just got to see how this looks you know this is uh, two bishops and um quite an annoying past e pawn for um uh for the rook um actually um it was either white winning or drawing uh, stockfish managed to draw this as black against dragon um most times uh although it did lose uh, one as well and uh yeah dragon was lost a, lost a couple um so um for example um let's have a look how um this all went i'll just give you a little example knight g6 bishop c3 rook d7 king e2 um rook d8 and now d4 b5 d5 check g4 the pawns start to roll Bishop e6, takes, takes, king b6, bishop b4. Yeah, I mean, uh, white's threatening stuff like uh, rook f6, and then you're going to start getting the pawns rolling, so black gives back some material. But, um, yeah, and uh, this was, uh, well, Stockfish managed to uh, to draw this. It's uh, Yeah, it would still be a little bit awkward, uh, to be honest, in the human game. Bishop against knight, and this knight is not so fantastic. Uh, bishop also very annoying, uh, cutting off the rook and also stopping the pawns from advancing. But uh, but yeah, this was uh, somehow um, uh, Stockfish managed to make um, you know, a reasonable draw in the, in this position. But yeah, there were other games that uh, that went uh, was somehow more um, more difficult. So yeah, tricky uh, tricky position for uh, for Black, but um, some reasonable chances of holding. Komodo also tried the move queen e7, which is quite interesting. Just um, the idea being queen g7, queen e5. 
Um, so we just uh, yeah give you that um, uh, that uh, that pawn f seven and say good luck with that. Um, if you go uh, bishop f seven, king d eight, queen a eight was uh, was played once. Knight h six, bishop b six, king e six check, queen b seven. So blacks have piece up, but king a little bit exposed, and of course this knight on a one. But rook f eight, b four, bishop b four, bishop b two takes takes, queen h five, g four. Queen f7 and uh, king c1, queen f3, rook d1, king b2, knight c2, just uh, crazy stuff happening. Queen b3 check, queen c2, and we have reached um, an endgame where white is a pawn up. And, uh, well, dragon only managed to draw this again, stockfish. Sort of looks like it should be winning this. Uh, I don't really understand why uh, why a, a pawn isn't a pawn isn't a pawn, as uh, Tony Miles always said. Yeah. He always said a pawn is a pawn is a pawn whenever I complained about how difficult it was to, to, to convert. So uh, basically meant that, um, you know, you're the, you're the happy one. You're going to be going on forever. It's never going to change. So just be just enjoy it. You know, that was the, uh, the general advice. So, um, yeah, some pretty crazy stuff in there. Um, oh, yeah. Um, bishop f7. That was bishop f7. Queen f7. D3. B4. Uh, again, all these lines just, um, uh, just uh, yeah, you know, white looking eventually to to try and do this. Oh yeah, this was this crazy game. Yes, I desperately, definitely wanted to show this one to you. I have no idea what's going on to be honest. Um, white's um, a rook and a piece down, um, and even his own king looks uh, a little bit in danger. But somehow, uh, uh, Stockfish just uh, gave up um, this uh, position and got uh, a position with two bishops. Against the um, uh, against the, uh, um, uh, the 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 black two rooks. Um, also, uh, incidentally, with uh, Bishop B three as a threat to trap the um, uh, the black queen. So Rook E eight played. I think I guess the idea was to meet uh, Bishop B three with uh, with Rook takes E four check. At least I can't see anything uh, anything else that you do. But Queen D four, King C eight, Bishop B three. Rook d8 was played. Uh, presumably, uh, didn't fancy queen b1 for uh, uh, for some reason. Well, maybe we can start just hitting the rook actually with bishop f7 afterwards, which uh, yeah, it's going to be quite uh, quite serious. So uh, rook d8 played, and then white uh, white won there. But um, crazy lines. But I think you can see that um, after this f takes e5 uh, idea, really, I mean, um, uh, white is well on top. I think it was, you know, well over plus one somehow was uh, the evaluation of the engines there. But um, uh, actually, uh, Schlechter played something else. He played knight e7, which was, uh, I think, very reasonable. Uh, the idea is uh, uh, that he actually he just wants to escape to the uh, queen side with the king. So queen g7 and then king d7 here. Um, you've got to watch out there because if you go rook f8, we'll play this move e6, and after takes we uh, we take with a bishop on e6, and your king's just stuck there forever, you know. And uh, so yeah, I mean we're just going to go d3, bishop g5, and uh, you know going to be very very tricky for um, for black here. So king d7 played, and now um, yeah Neumann went a little bit wrong. I mean yeah you can't blame Neumann for what he did I mean it feels right to to chase that king when especially when you see that it's going to be reasonably short of squares but what the engines wanted to do and this is a, a pretty common way of doing it for them was to go bishop f7 king c8 and then e6 and the idea of this simply is um, that uh, you know this bishop f7 pawn e6 structure really ties down the black pieces for quite a long time i mean the the rook can't get to g8 uh, the queen you know finds it hard to escape and it's got to protect the rook on h8 and then in the meantime i can just go b3 bishop b2 pick up the knight and um yeah then I, what have i got i've got um uh one two three four five six seven yeah i've got two pawns um and uh and the knight for the rook you know just very good material situation there so yeah, I mean this is um, this is pretty pretty good for um, for uh, yeah for white here, and uh, just very hard for black to uh, to really yeah do anything with all the extra time he's got. I mean maybe you can get your king uh, um, a little bit safe off to a decent place, but then white's material uh, situation is going to be pretty good really. So that would have been the best, but uh, Neumann kept on checking. So check, and now um, Bishop d5 check. King b6 and yeah the engines like black simply they don't feel that uh, well I mean it's one of those things that's hard to judge isn't it I mean uh, you know are you really getting at this king or are you just making a lot of um, uh, senseless moves and helping black get uh, get better yeah I mean it's uh, basically the last one 
Um, so um, important not to uh, to take yet because after takes then the queen suddenly gets access to the fourth rank there so here b4 would be very very dangerous for, uh, for black but king b6 we just stay like that so yeah neumann kept on going um, i mean the engines are saying you know please please just go b3 bishop b2 grab that knight back grab some material back but neumann kept on going knight a4 king a5 knight takes c5 and d takes c5 and now queen f3 um, you can't blame him for this idea. It's a pretty uh, dangerous looking one. I mean, um, you're looking to go queen a3 check and then do something like b4, for example. You know, that would be, uh, yeah, I mean, it looks it looks really dangerous. The only problem actually is that um, black's got a really good idea here. Could take on d5, takes, and then play this move queen d7. And uh, the whole point is that um, uh, queen a3 can be met by queen a4 check. Um, and actually, you're you're just threatening Queen A4 generally, and then going to take this A2 pawn. This actually turns out to be rather difficult. B3, Rook D8, Bishop B2 was the best the engine could suggest, and then Queen D5. You know, we're just forcing the exchange of uh, queens there, and uh, well, White hasn't even got a pawn for the exchange. You know, it's just uh, completely winning for Black this one. So that was pretty close, but uh, Schlechter played C6. Um, which looks you know, very, very reasonable. Uh, give your king um, an escape back uh, to the uh, queen side. But now, um, actually, uh, um, there were some uh, some decent ways of uh, of doing this. The uh, the engines wanted um, queen c3 check, king a6, and then bishop takes f7. And again, what we're doing we're setting up this e6 bishop f7 structure and then we're going to go for the um uh, for the a1 knight and uh, well i mean actually this is uh, this is still quite um quite tricky for um uh, for black you know i mean uh, i've um, i'm attacking with the rook on c5 here i mean I, i've got possibilities of going stuff like b4 or whatever so it's 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 a very complex position still you know so um I mean, norman played um, bishop f7 um, and here black played b5 which was somehow it's quite it's a bit more comfortable yeah because the the you get this pawn barrier here and then the king comes back to uh, to b6 so that's not quite so good but still the engines wanted um, b4 check takes and bishop b2 uh, just picking up the knight um, and then um, well you know uh, we play a3 and the game goes on you know very very sharp here but we've got uh, you know a b is quite awkward we've got stuff like queen e3 then rook f6 yeah I mean uh, th this could go either way basically in a, in a human game so um, uh, yeah and then you know we've always got e6 just to consolidate that bishop if we particularly want it as well so yeah very very interesting still but um, Neumann sort of uh, he sort of lost the the energy somehow uh, in the position and just uh, played uh, queen c3 check king b6 and then b3 um, which uh, is fine you're going to pick up the material but uh, you're not really causing the the maximum damage to uh, to black there now the very best move for black was to play the move uh, knight g6 and uh, well i mean the idea simply is that you're uh, you're just going to get the um uh, the queen active uh, if uh, something like queen a1 you can go something like you know queen d3 and you've got you know threats everywhere basically and uh, so that was actually um a, a pretty good move if if uh, here rook f1 well knight b3 bishop b3 rook f8 this was one uh, idea um, another idea that I quite liked was uh, b4, queen a1, and then queen d3, rook f3, queen f4, e6, knight f4. I mean, we've talked about this e6, bishop f7, only, you know, somehow that was fine when the, the whole of the black queen side was quite cramped somehow, because, uh, you know, whereas here somehow, with the, the black king having come to b6, you sort of feel that actually these po these pieces have got limited uh, ability to restrict the opponent's pieces. I mean, I can uh, start doing stuff on the D file. I could even do stuff on the A file now. So, yeah, it doesn't feel half as strong as it um, as it did before somehow. But I mean, the position's still extremely sharp, of course. You know, but um, but the engines like black a lot here. Um, Stechter's move was very natural. Queen D4. Um, simply uh, uh, trying to exchange off queens and uh, make the position um, um, a little bit more um, 
uh, normal and logical. Um, it's not bad at all, uh, but it does throw away quite a bit of the black advantage. I mean, after all, you know, White's got uh, two bishops. This knight is going to be one. Uh, you've got a past uh, e pawn. Well, two past e pawns actually. You know, so um, it's not actually going to be that easy for um, for uh, uh, for Black to convert this. Um, but um, yeah, somehow Neumann doesn't quite get it right. I mean, the engine slightly surprisingly, but it's quite interesting. They they quite like the move for uh, d3 here. Um, just trying to bring the bishop out to uh, to g5. So not not using the um, uh, the uh, the bishop to win the knight, but uh, just calculating that you've uh, got some time and get the bishop active on the um, the c1 h6 diagonal and either pick it up with the rook, pick the knight up with the rook, or even with the king afterwards. You know that's the uh, the idea. So uh, this was one continuation: e6, rook a7, bishop g5. You can see how awkward it is the, now that the black the, the dark square bishop's involved in here. We're stopping uh, rook d8. We've got ideas like bishop f6 takes d4. So, um, and um, yeah, uh, let's have a look. What have we got here? Um, bishop g, uh, rook h8, takes, takes e7, threatening rook f8. So rook e8 played to meet uh, rook f8 with rook a8. And now king c1 and king b2, picking it up. Takes, takes, a4, king c2. And uh, actually the engines uh, went for this position and declared that the uh, position was a draw. Ooh. Bit of a bit of a complicated rook ending, I can tell you. I'm not uh, getting draw vibes here yet, but um, but yeah, this is um, uh, this was rather uh, um, this was rather uh, um, uh, okay for uh, for white, but quite interesting idea. Just to uh, just uh, instead of playing bishop b2 like Neumann did, um, just playing uh, a move like uh, d3 and um, and really making sure that that dark squared bishop well that the two bishops really act like that instead of just being a big pawn on a1 so neumann played uh, the move bishop b2 it's not uh, it's not bad bad or anything like that but somehow d3 bishop g5 getting the bishop into activity there would uh, do better but actually neumann plays quite interestingly because uh, after c5 he plays the move um, b4 so he doesn't just let uh, grab the knight and then let that bishop get entombed he's got a real idea just wants to break things open um so knight c6 played takes king takes and uh, well the knight's still trapped uh, the knight's not going to be able to sacrifice itself for a b pawn which is pretty good and well you know the two bishops are are in the mix there now um the engines uh, like rook f1 the best here um, just aiming actually for, for rook f5 uh, because the idea is knight e5 I go um, rook f1 and uh, if you go king d6 here then I've got bishop a3 check which is annoying uh, well annoying I'm going to pick up that knight on e5 so you have to give back the exchange actually and then bishop a1 and uh, well this is quite a still very interesting end game but uh, the engines think that this is uh, this is equal um, so but white played bishop d5, which is again not so bad. Um, just attacking that knight on uh, on c6. It's just that it doesn't, you know. Actually, white's idea is to take on uh, c6 here, then win the pawn on d4, then win the knight on a1. But um, uh, yeah, we're not getting this rook on, a, on uh, h1 active, and uh, obviously by moving the bishop away from the f file, you're giving black access to it. So yeah, uh, just in general, I'm I'm not as uh, happy with that move as uh, as um, yeah rook f1 somehow. But um, but here it takes takes, and now Neumann yeah, he started doing some funny stuff. Um, uh, I mean, the simplest idea would be to play simply bishop takes d4, uh, take that pawn, um, something like rook f4, rook e1, rook g8, g4, and then we go bishop a1, and then we can decide what we want to do. Um, you know, um, uh, maybe, you know, d4, d5, as should have been played later in the game, is going to be a strong one, or, you know, maybe we just, uh, uh, I don't know, get the bishop active with uh, with bishop d4, something like that. But, you know, white's got uh, um, three pawns uh, for the exchange. You know, obviously, you wouldn't be surprised if white lost uh, something somewhere, um, because, uh, yeah, the, you know, the position is quite loose. There's a lot of space in the white position and not that many pieces to defend it. But still, you know, it's... Um, it's a, a pretty decent idea. A little bit surprised that Neumann didn't do this after his earlier excellent play. Um, but he played quite ambitiously, King e2. It was real, yeah, it's, I mean, it's real ambition, basically, what he's doing. He's trying to um, uh, to maybe have a rook c1 check, maybe even take with a, the rook on a1, and also get his king off the back rank. Maybe, yeah, maybe he was thinking of, uh, of getting it involved a little bit. Also, just trying to stop the rook from invading on the, uh, the f-file. 
But it's actually a serious mistake, but uh, Stechler doesn't uh, exploit it. To be honest, I understand why, because it's not very clear to me. Well, it would certainly not be obvious to me, uh, but... Um, so knight c2 is what uh, the engines want. And then after rook c1, rook c8, rook c2, we go king d7. And this clever idea forces the, the, um, uh, the pieces to, uh, to be exchanged. And um, apparently this, what, this particular one, the engines think that this is, um, this is uh, absolutely fine. Rook takes g3, completely winning for, uh, for black. Uh, for, you know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm still uh, scratching my head and wondering about it, you know, when I, when I see it. But, you know, pawns on both sides, very active rook. Um, yeah, I mean, the chances are good, right? You know, you blockade the e-pawn and, uh, and, uh, and then just try and win the h-pawn. But that's um, the reason I say that it's not at all obvious to me is that, uh, well, Schlechter played rook g8, white played g4, and now knight c2, rook c1. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, here the engines think that, um, that the, you know, the previous option is no longer possible. So, for example, something like king b7, rook c2, um, sorry, uh, rook c8 takes takes. They think that after h4, that white's doing extremely well here. <laughs> you know, it's actually a slight advantage to white. Somehow having this extra tempo g4 just means that uh, the white pieces are much more dangerous. I'd need to have a good look at that, uh, at these sort of things, because, uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, th these are judgments, um, you know, really that probably depend quite a bit on pawn races. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I simply can't, um, uh, can't make any judgment about that uh, really without, you know, some very deep analysis. So... Um, I mean, uh, that, uh, that's on my list to, uh, to have a look at that later. You never know, it might be uh, another video later. Uh, what Schlechter did was very understandable. He played d3 check. And after king d3, rook f3, king c2, and then rook h3. And the idea of that, basically, is that, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's just uh, made sure he's given up his knight actually for, um, for uh, kingside pawns. Um, he gains some tempi as well, and he gets a fast h pawn. You know, not uh, not a bad idea at all. Um, and here Neumann uh, went a little bit wrong, um, actually, and I can understand why he went wrong. But uh, yeah, uh, despite that, uh, the, the facts are, are clear. It, at this stage, he had to be brave, basically, and he had to play um, uh, a move like uh, d4. Um, and then uh, we get uh, king d7. And then white plays d5, rook g4, attacking e4 and rook e1. And I can understand why he didn't want to do this because, you know, we've got rooks coming in on the, uh, um, on the seventh ranks. We've even got some pawns that could, uh, uh, you know, join in. I mean, this is actually quite nerve wracking. It feels, you know, especially considering that white's played these moves, king e2 to d3. I mean, especially to, to avoid getting uh, caught on the, um, on the back rank. It's pr you know, probably very counterintuitive to do this. But of course, you know, the white pawns are pretty dangerous as well. You know, uh, uh, e6, you, you could play a move like rook f1, uh, you'll, you'll get your rook on the seventh, you'll get d6. These are going very, very fast. So um, basically the engines didn't believe that, um, that white um, really had anything. So uh, for example, they weren't even trying to go on the bottom rank where they were. Well, there's a few ideas, let's have a look. So b4, e6 check. Um, king d6, bishop f6, rook f3, e7. Uh, yeah, we could get in uh, e5 just to uh, you know just support the 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 the, um, uh, the bishop on f6. So it uh, looks a little bit worrying to be honest. Uh, also after b4, the engines also looked at bishop d4, rook g2, king b1, bishop c5, and e6 with the draw. We're gonna we're gonna go d6. You're gonna have to. You're going to have to give up that um, that that rook simply, you know. Otherwise, the um, uh, the white pawns are going to queen. Um, so that's one idea. Um, rook f3 was the main line. Bishop d4, b4, king b1, and then bishop c5. You win that pawn. But I go rook d1, and uh, yeah. Again, the engines felt that this was really uh, this was uh, going to be all right for white. At some stage, white's going to be able to force d6, d7, or d6 e7 if the black rooks uh, move away too far still very complicated i wouldn't uh, you know if this was in a human game i would bet on any on any one of three results happening but it looks like um uh, just in general terms it was the moment to be brave so um what neumann did, did um was actually I, I guess try and aim for some sort of fortress um but it's not working very well really check king d7 rook e4 
I mean, the, the black rooks are really, really active. These pawns are quite hard to uh, to defend, uh, certainly with a bishop on a limb out here on uh, on a7. And um, and obviously this past uh, h-pawn is dangerous. And actually uh, Schlechter set a, a very devious trap, which uh, Neumann fell into. Um, so here he played the move rook d4. And Neumann replied with a very uh, obvious rook c2, and you can give it to yourself as a little tactical trick. How did uh, Schlechter finish the game off here? With the lovely rook d4 check. Why is that? Because after king c1 or king a1, we've got rook h1 and it's checkmate. You know, just out of nowhere, you know, it's uh, uh, there's a, a mate like that. I think I saw a good, like something like this before in uh, one of Judith Polgar's games, but uh, really very, very nice indeed. So there we are. Very exciting game. Very exciting uh, line of the of the king's gambit. There, um, some quite instructive things. I, I mean, I, I liked very much. Um, uh, well, first of all, in the opening, this uh, this idea of playing queen g4 rather than queen g3 um, was uh, yeah again something that would never occur to me. Um, what I did like very much was this um, uh, this little structure. Let me just show it to you. Yeah, with the uh, the pawn e6, the idea of having this bishop f7 pawn e6, and it just uh, you know restricts the uh, the opponent's position, and then you can go about calmly just picking up this um, this knight on a1. You know, maybe with b3, actually, you know, similar to the game, maybe just d3, bishop g5, and, and king d2 to do it. You know, that's um, uh, that's very nice. I thought that was very very nice indeed. And um, yeah, I mean, uh, all all the rest of the tactics were just uh, were just really fascinating. And um, yeah, I mean, you can see that. Um, you know, both Neumann and Schlechter played this very, very inventively. Um, found a lot of good moves, missed some stuff, of course. But uh, yeah, I mean, who wouldn't in uh, in such a position? Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you, you're. Um, I, I'm often, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, the the, uh, the players of old were, were not as strong as the uh, elite players nowadays. But you are often uh, so impressed with the uh, inventiveness, you know, of um, of, uh, of ideas displayed. I mean, I think uh, you know, modern players. You know, do calculate better and uh, a lot more precise uh, than uh, than uh, players of, of that age. But in terms of uh, of inventiveness, you know, uh, well, you know, the, the, those uh, classical players, you know, really knew a thing or two. So uh, very, very impressive. It's why you know, looking at these games is such fun. It's why writing the book, reengineering the chess classics, where we, uh, yeah, we took thirty five uh, classic games, some well known, others not at all well known, but absolutely fantastic. Um, took them, analysed with them with the engines and uh, discovered things in, in, in every single phase of the game. You know, I mean, uh, lots of stuff, uh, positional stuff, strategical stuff, end game stuff, especially, um, but also lots of interesting tactical stuff as well, of course. So, well, you know, uh, if you like this video, why not uh, take a look at that uh, book? Maybe also Silicon Road Chess Improvement, which I'm also still very proud of. And, um, you know, otherwise, thanks very much for watching. Uh, do keep uh, your eyes peeled. We've got uh, lots of engine games coming. Also, uh, quite a few games of Karl Schlechter as well. So hopefully that's going to be uh, interesting for everyone. Thanks very much for watching.